Okay, that's the first one out of three that I'm trying to make today. I forgot how much fun it is. It's so much fun. Good blacksmithing should have a little bit of adrenaline to it. So you get that with this. I'm also a little bit rusty. I used to be able to sculpt it a little bit better. It's a combination of where the heat is and how you're applying the pressure and whatnot. I'll take it out and take a look at it and then we'll do a couple more. Let's put in the second one here. So the experiment today is to actually play with trying to go as deep as I can with this process. By far the hardest part is when you flip the edge and that, that, that's working this edge here. Once that's kind of like rolled over, then you can continue to push it down and that, that is a tricky thing to do. If you actually look at this piece here, this was just a pipe when I started and it's actually become upset as the heat and pressure has been slowly on it over all the bowls I've spun. It's kind of cool. So with this 3 16 plate, it's a little, I'm struggling a little bit to get the heat I need. I've been, uh, the, the previous bowls I did were out of 10 gauge. And with that, with these two torches, you could actually get up to like a nice yellow heat or a little bit above that. And you could really tell because you're pushing on the material, you can really feel like the plasticity of the material. When it gets to elevated temperature, it becomes so soft and smooth to work. Whereas with this, you know, you're struggling a little bit and it takes about all I can throw at it at some points just to get it to shape. So it's a good upper body workout. So anyways, this one is quite a bit deeper than the last one I did. So I'm going to put it down and compare it. And then I want to do one more that I'm going to try to go even further. And I might have to actually look at my tooling. I might not actually be able to get out to shape it down. So we might have to do some work on this in here. before it went and then I thought it was okay. Can't be too tight. That is not right. You know what? I think the problem is right here. So I just got this in the mail. What was going on, it's a new day, is my live center got cooked from the heat, right? I know how bad this is on the lathe. Putting this much heat into it, it's brutal. When I actually first started doing this in 2015, I had a little bit better of heat shield set up because I actually did like 50 of these things. My live center was this one then and it burned out, but it actually lasted pretty long. And this one I paid like 40 bucks for and now it's completely burned out in an incredibly short period of time. The one I wanted was $1,000, so I went and spent $40 from Amazon Prime shipping. Oh, it's so small. Oh no. <laughs> Knowing that this is going to burn out, but hoping just to get through this job because I'm actually just prototyping these uh, bowls. That's what I'm making right now, these three different bowls. 
So I want to get them out and see how they work before we spend a lot of time and money on tooling up. Is that going to get me through the one bowl though? That is really, 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 really small. Got this all sorted out here. So let's give this thing another run for our money. So what happened is when it got stuck, it jammed. I don't know what it hit, it hit something. And I've got a pretty big ding here. And that means that there's a ding on this side and that, that can get tricky because it actually starts to create like a washboard effect where the tooling hits and bumps and it can get away on us. So we'll see, we'll see what that means for us when we get going here. So back in 2015, my friend Kenny, who owns Barter Design, uh, him and I developed this product into what it was. A, it was called the Shield Series, and it was sort of like that first bowl I made, a very flat one. So we did about 50 of them or so, and then I haven't done a lot since like 2015, 2016. And so what we're doing is we're coming back at it, and we're going to try to uh, play with it a little bit more. That's why I'm going deeper dishing it today. I just had the idea in my head for a long time to try using rotational centrific of force and heat to forge material. And so that's where this product was developed from. But the intent of it was to never stop here. This was really just to see if we could do it. And I've got a ton of ideas of where I'd love to go with it. I just haven't been able to do that. So this tooling is so crude, but you know, you could really probably go some pretty cool places with it if you could have the time. I'd love to dedicate a machine specifically to it and mod it and really uh, play with this idea. But anyways, that's why it looks a little sketchy. It's not fully developed, you know? We'll give it another shot and see what happens here. take it out and we'll put it down beside the other ones and see how it looks. So these are the three bowls here and back in 2015 when I started this project with uh, Kenny from Barter Design uh, we built about 50 of these and that was as far as I took it so this is fun to see how much further we can take it. The amount of work to go from this one to this one is just crazy how hard it is. Started this idea with the hopes of taking it a lot further than this. I'd actually like to try being able to manipulate solid chunks of hot steel while it's spinning. But I have no idea how much tooling I would have to build for that. I would have to dedicate a machine and really set it up. Maybe someday I get that opportunity. It would be also fun to play around with tuning them by the depth I don't know exactly know how that would work, but that would be pretty fun. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video, a little bit different. Uh, just bringing you into something that we've been playing with for a while, but would love to continue to progress on it. Just an update for you, on January 29th, we're gonna be dropping another small batch of the axes. We did one back in November. So if you missed out and you wanna get in on that, Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel, stay current here, but also jump over to Instagram because I'm more current with that type of work and I'll announce it there. They'll be available on my website, January 29th. All the details of the axes are on there. So if you want to check it out, do that. 
Last time they sold out really fast, so if you want to buy one, make sure you're ready to go on January 29th. I'll let you know more of the details as they come along. But for now, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.